I am Anima. I am an amateur coach. I work pretty closely with some communities like in the Overwatch University community, the competitive Overwatch community and Discord, Coach Spilo's community from the London Spitfire, etc. So recently I've been watching some contenders with the the newest going ons in uh with the the new season and i've been noticing that a lot of teams are playing a lot of junker queen and i i think it's a little bit suspect i'm just gonna go straight to the point i don't know where the narrative began that she was the meta and I think many t many teams are running her when they really just shouldn't be. So I know Natter said early on that uh, teams were really looking a lot at running that Brig, Lucio, Junker Queen, Genji, Sojourn kind of style of play, right? Because um, there's so much AoE sustain, it's basically Overwatch 2 GOATS edition, all that good stuff. Except... I think it sacrifices a lot more than most of these teams realize. And as a result, I think that really they should probably be looking at some other compositions. Now, if you've watched my content or like read my Reddit posts sometimes, I did recently release a post called Tanks 101 and a video on Junker Queen, specifically on tanks in general, on both my YouTube channel and Reddit page. And I talked about some of the reasons that Junker Queen probably wouldn't be that good when she was released. And for the most part, I, w I felt like I was pretty on the ball. She's strong in unorganized play, but she has a lot of key weaknesses that we will see real quick in this pre uh, in previewing a couple moments from these contenders matches. The basic issues with Junker Queen, though, is that she's kind of like a less min-maxed Roadhog. So... Let me explain. Roadhog is a poke and brawl kind of middle ground hero. He has mid-range to close range power, very little mobility, some moderate uh, survivability in close range and long range, but kind of dicey. He bites all of his impact on tempo spikes based on his hook and take a breather. So he goes in, Looks to play really aggressively with hook and take a breather to get a kill or two, and then has to fall back. Junker Queen, on the other hand, plays at a more stable tempo, but it's still pretty heavily based around Shout. Because she doesn't have to wait on two cooldowns as much, but as Knife is a pretty short cooldown. But she very much relies on Shout to get her value. And as a whole, she doesn't rely so much on getting that like one knife shot or whatever to get her value because her gun has a smaller spread, giving her a lot more powerful play in the neutral, etc. So she shares a lot of the same weaknesses with Roadhog too, because as like a kind of brawly hero with maybe a tiny bit of poke, uh, she doesn't have any mobility. She she's like specs into that a little bit more because of her speed boost, which is why she's like a less min-maxed Roadhog. But she doesn't actually get, like, that's just a little bit of extra horizontal mobility. So realistically, you're not getting really more mobility out of her than you would from, say, a Reinhardt. All you're getting is more team mobility in a close area around her. So this leads to three main issues that we will be seeing in these clips. The first, this composition does not have map control. Now, the whole idea of speed is that it lets you close the distance in an, uh, well, speed and mobility as a whole, is it lets you create distance when you are disadvantaged and close the distance when you are advantaged, in, in her case, because she's a close range hero. So you have this dynamic of well but the best use of map uh, of mobility is, is for map control right because if you can wrap around the enemy or deny key areas from them 
suddenly you have so much control over the engagement between that and the ability to control the spacing that you just get free fights. But you have to stack on top of Junker Queen to benefit from her shout and the Lucio speed boost. So by that nature, you're not actually able to use the speed boost in a way that is going to help you control the map, deny angles, etc. unless you're like running around clearing the whole sides of the map. But this style is a lot weaker in Overwatch 2. I know that Temporal has actually released videos on this, and I believe Egos to Cat as well, but basically you can't stack up on your team anymore in Overwatch 2. If you look at the London Spitfire, who are known for being the quote-unquote brawl team in Overwatch 2 Overwatch League, they don't stack. There is very large amounts of time that Hottie or Backbone on the May or like all these players, they're not they're not playing stacked. They're playing uh, for map control and to control key zones of the map and taking weird angles and stuff. So I think if the if the, the Overwatch League pros are moving away from that, I think Contenders probably wants to follow suit. So first issue is no map control. The second issue is that it's countered by AOE damage. So intuitively you would think, well, what's the best answer to AOE damage? Well, A AOE healing, right? And that is true to an extent, but the problem is it's kind of like a, they just match each other out, right? So if, if the AOE healing is matched by AOE damage, you're kind of just negating the benefit that either has, which is comfortable because if you're a very single target team, you might struggle a lot versus a very like AOE rushdown kind of play. I mean, just look at like how goats just rolled a lot of teams that were less experienced compared to if you're like very AOE centric and like uh, playing scattered and don't let them close the distance with long distance poke and mobility, which is like what was coming in at the end of goats. Well, they don't really have any answers to that. So you'll see heroes like Wrecking Ball, Ash, and Ana play actually a key role in just absolutely denying this AOE sustain that um, that the Junker Queen comps have. And as a result, they kind of just crumble after a little bit of their pressure spike because they, they're so reliant on their HP resource here that just this constant cleave and burn does not treat them well. And the last uh, issue that I saw is that there's no answers really to slow tempo play. So I've talked about tempo before, but uh, I believe it was in my post, well, it was in one of my Overwatch League analysis posts. But basically, Junker Queen's comp doesn't have that much poke damage if you're running the Moira. And even with the Zen and Sojourn, like that's really it because Junker Queen is a little weak in that department. Genji's like so-so in that department. And you're probably going to get outpoked in the neutral. Like here, Cass, May, the, the, they probably are going to outpoke here or at least hold even. So then you have the question of, well, if they're if these guys are stronger in the neutral, how are these guys going to create their power spike? They amp, they shout, but if they don't make a play in that brief moment, it, it's really difficult to, to get any ground. And I don't really feel like their ult cycles on this team are really compelling enough, maybe, to create the power spikes needed to, to merit the, the composition. So, for a quick overview of which matches we'll be looking at, we'll be looking at uh, well, spoilers alert, first of all. Uh, we'll be looking at Pirates in Pajamas versus Dark Mode. We have um, two replays from here. We'll be looking at Henning's Sun versus Aw Yeah in uh, Contenders Europe. And then in Contenders North America, we have Playing for Access versus Uprising Academy and Bear Claw Gaming versus GeForce. So we'll be taking a quick overview at just a couple of small moments and how these teams have played into the Junker Queen and basically made her irrelevant. So we'll start with GeForce versus Bear Claw Gaming. Intuitively, you might think, well, 
Junker Queen should be great on Koth and Push, right? And to that I answer, yes, she is. She actually, that is the one place she, she does belong. I think on Koth maps, there's relatively lower angle options, and that makes her a much stronger pick. You don't have to worry as much about high grounds in general or side flanks, and a lot of the times you can just bully out whoever's on point. Additionally, in the symmetrical map types, which are King of the Hill and Push, because the teams start on a symmetrical map, speed boosts are kind of overpowered. As in, the faster a team can get to the point and start taking strong positions, the better. Because you're either denying the enemy team from getting them because you're there at the same time to meet up if you're in the mirror, or you get to them first and can actually anchor into those positions before the enemy team can get access. So, Junker Queen's mobility is pretty useful for that. Same with Lucio, etc. That's why Brawl has historically been strong on King of the Hill and pretty strong on push as well. However, uh, we'll see pretty quickly some of the issues with this though. Even though Junker Queen has a good matchup on Koth and push and has merit there, we still have the same issues of counter by AoE damage or at least very hard checked and struggles versus poke stuff that they can't easily close the distance on and no map control. So here you see Bear Claw Gaming playing in for this uh, right side play. And my guess is they're kind of looking to just skirmish a little here before either rushing onto uh, Madeira or Angelic. Either that, or they might just be trying to force point. And right off the bat, you see that Pummy landed a huge dynamite, which that like that's like already low, 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 and we don't have enough burst healing here from the Lucio, especially not if we were running Brig, but the Lucio and the Brig would not have enough burst healing to deal with something like this already, because you're all just focused on AoE. And even with the Moira, well, you're using her healing resources and healing orbs, but you actually want that for your power spike, because this is more poke, this is more poke, this is more poke, this is more poke, this is more poke. They enti We entirely outpoke their comp for the most part, because really they just have the Sojourn for that. So you come across the curious issue of, well, how do you avoid having your resources forced as Junker Queen early in the fights? Because if you get these resources forced here, like your healing orb, suddenly you can't actually rush anyone down. And that's your only win condition as this comp. So you're put in this awkward situation where you basically have to hide and path really carefully and do kind of a gimmick play style where like, uh, like when stacks run goats and like hide in a small room and rush at people uh that's basically all you can do for the most part here because even if you don't if you don't spend those resources up oh, look bam hit by nade hit by uh <laughs> well first of all even if they did spend the resources they already just had the aoe play from the slam the nade the dynamite which already just does such an astronomical amount of pressure that if they want to survive this at all, their engagement is just entirely crippled. And we basically see it just clean up from here. Forgotten gets a nice pick off onto Pummy, but at this point, it's already over for the most part. And you'll see a pretty swift cap. And Bear Claw Gaming does go or go on to lose this match to G Force throughout the whole stage, GeForce had a pretty decisive advantage on the Wrecking Ball. And they Bearclaw does not play Junker Queen on these other stages, which, good for them. I think that's probably the better choice. But they still lose to GeForce in the end. Now, we have another interesting case. Dark Mode versus Pirates in Pajamas. This has some bigger names. Petal is a good player. Juby is a good player. Maximus is a good player, though I haven't heard of them personally. I was pretty impressed by their play. Obviously, uh, LH Cloudy and Lep are pretty well known in the uh, NA Contenders sphere. Aiko is known from Collegiate Scene, and I think they are actually a very underrated player who has potential in, for in the future, etc. So, for a little bit of context, both teams captured the objective in, in the initial push. And this is the second stage of pushes. 
Now, you'll see dark mode here playing on a split, which, first of all, is how they should be, because even if you want to, like, all sit in there and run at them, that's a very, like, one-dimensional play style. So even with the, the awkward situation, you're still probably going to be better off by controlling this high ground at least a little bit. Meanwhile, Maximus is probably kind of going to anchor point there. You see the classic rotation. This is to avoid like May walls and to help a kite while avoiding your resource burn. Because this is also a close range comp that theoretically wants to avoid resource, uh, resource burn. Not to mention, they don't need to burn resources early on because they want them to match the power spike from this comp. These comps are pretty equal in terms of poke, like we said, and tempo. But you see the run across. And, like, Maximus just has nothing that they can do here. The, the team just gets this high ground for free. I think we could have rotated all the way up and then maybe even dropped behind, but this is fine too. And Doomed already goes down. And, like, at this point, Dark Mode is already really hamstringed in terms of any momentum that they can get. So, Pedal gets off the early pickoff onto Haven. That's kind of what pip gets for not clearing out this high ground more i'm not sure how lep dies they probably shouldn't have but even then like there just isn't enough composed uh resource dedication here from dark mode to actually like gain any advantage in the team fight which is what matters more they just they don't have an answer to uh the map control because even though pip uh like, the, the thing is, is usually the best way for a high-tempo comp, such as Junker Queens, to match a lower-tempo variance comp is you'll want to use the map control to set up your highest possible pressure spike. But the problem is here, uh, Pip, they just can clear out the tiny semblance of map control that Dark Mode's ha Mode has, and then they just win the neutral, because neither team is really using any flanks or angles. So you're in this like really awkward situation of it's like, well, what are, what are we using this speed and this AoE brawling power for if we're just losing in the poke battle because we can't close the distance and like burst stuff down without feeding, right? And, and we just still just don't have any answers to that lower tempo play. Not to mention, Reinhardt and May can be pretty dangerous, I think, as answers too. Because if Junker Queen wants to go in aggro at all, her team is taking a lot of cleave damage. Not to mention, they have no answers for Earth Shatter or for Blizzard, unless it's like Genji deflecting it or everybody running out of the Blizzard. I mean, yeah, you can beat, but then your Lucio isn't with your team because you don't want him to get frozen as much or uh, don't want him to get shattered, which at that point, you're once again hamstringing your value. Now we'll see an example on push. And once again, I think Junker Queen is okay on push and on cough. But she's a lot stronger on New Queen Street than on uh, Coliseo. And this is because she doesn't fare well into the long sight lines because she likes to close the distance without burning many resources. This whole center point is one, one long sight line, this whole hallway. And even the sightlines over here and here are pretty long. New Queen Street, however, is, first of all, it's a lot more horizontal. There isn't much, like, high grounds that you need to worry about. So her and Lucio can get a lot more traction. And second of all, uh, New Queen Street has a lot more, like, flank routes and through paths that you might be able to, like, get around to, to close the distance and maybe get a slightly more advantageous matchup. Lastly, of course, is uh, with push versus Koth, it's, uh, she's maybe a little weaker on push because on Koth, it, like, you very definitively have that one point. But on push, you'll see teams kind of doing the escort mode kind of vibe where they'll leave one person on cart maybe and then push up a bit. While on Koth, you can probably get away with holding a bit closer to the point. I'm going to turn off the music here. I'm done with that. 
So you see some of this classic play. Dark mode is notably like they arrive here way earlier than uh than Pip. And note that Pip doesn't like make a play up to the point until um, until it can move. But then they start like dragging the robot back towards them here, and they, like they they <laughs> well. So first of all, did they? Yeah. So both teams flipped the map here, which is probably a stronger play. And note, like, this pathing there going all the way around to avoid any poke. But yeah, by flipping the map here, that's actually an ingenious tactical move. Because now you have this awkward situation where you're pulling towards your, your team, and these guys are the ones with the distance widening, when we have the stronger poke, probably, with our Cassidy and May, and we're better into long sight lines with our Reinhardt than the Junker Queen. These guys have no options for not taking poke damage. We have wall, we have shield, we have the Moira sustain, which is more than the Zen. These guys are just destined to lose this poke battle. And, I mean, just watch. They, they finally get forced to make a play because they lose if they don't, and they lose the fight because it's an aggro sloppy fight. And uh, Pip basically just wins that first fight for free. And in a mode like this, the first fight is just monstrously important because it sets you up for getting distance. It's a morale thing. Uh, you get the start on ult economy, which doesn't reset. And well, Dark Mode begins to kind of pull it back because now they have the Echo, Sojourn, and uh, Zen, which kind of outpokes Pip. You still have uh, Pip lose, uh, winning this match in the long run because of that first fight advantage and just by the nature of Dark Mode's comp not really synergizing that well anymore. Like, I don't really know if Junker Queen is even the sauce at that point instead of just running a, like a Reinhardt or something or a, a ball. So it is what it is. Or maybe even like a... Azaria or something. It's hard to say. But like I, I just I don't think Junker Queen is really getting enough value in Dark Mode's comp here compared to just Petal and Doomed and Renko just pummeling. So it is what it is. Here we have Aya yeah versus Henning Sun. Aya yeah is like a a comp of like some one trick players. I think Chasm is supposed to be like ball one trick, Kaya is like a junk route one trick, etc. We see Henning's Sun on a very similar comp to some of these previous ones we've talked about. But here what we'll see, first of all, note that once again, I did, this is already the second rounds of attack. I'm doing that because teams tend to accelerate the pacing a little bit here. But it still gives us a pretty full rounded view of the, the fights. They're looking for engagements, but here's the thing. Uh, Henning's Sun, they just like like neither team is really forced here to to do that much, and Henning's Sun is basically just taking poke until they find an opening that they actually want to posture up on. Now the problem is there's no one really to run at here because if they run at uh, the Zen and Ana, they kind of just get surrounded and beat up from everyone else. And they can't really close the distance as well on either of these DPS. They can't really kill the ball that well. And because Henning's son just goes and runs it down on the low ground, <laughs> like uh, they don't have an answer to this Ash. They just they just don't. So this Ash is just gonna pummel them anytime they try and touch the point and stack together. They can't get the flank access on the low ground. Chasm gets the, the free pick on Muffin. I think there was a dynamite involved there too. But like, see, they just have so few 
ways to actually use their speed and brawling power in any effective way here. And that, like, <sighs> brawl is inherently a weaker comp than Overwatch. Because you can't exert your pressure over as large of an area as if you had range or mobility, which both let you directly which both let you directly relocate your pressure. Like, there's another big dynamite. And note, Ken is 75% to Bob, while Love is 50% to to their ult. And uh, Horthic is 50% to their ult. And, like, Anna, 70% to her ult. Compared to Brig at 40%, she doesn't build up that much ult, uh, ult very fast unless she's brawling. Same with Lucio, but Lucio can at least poke a bit. Like, Aya oh yeah, is gapping uh, Henning's son on, on key ultimates here. Ken, uh, Ken and Coolboy here, <laughs> like, they're going to have key ultimates up so much faster, which in turn uh basically just lets them hold on for free until Henning Sun accumulates their other ults and can like gain a decisive ult advantage. It's a little aggressive from Chasm, but it's fine for the most part because they can't really punish him without actually deciding to use a lot more of their resources than they really want to. So like the problem is with no mobility on no range, Henning Sun is like, well okay, what's your answer, right? Yeah, just have love get pickoffs early and stuff. Like, like you can't kill the ball here very easily. Uh, I think there was an Arnade that landed there from Coolboy. And I believe, we, yeah, the reason that they lose this fight is literally just love popping off. And that's probably more of a testament to maybe some positional issues from Aya oh, yeah, and uh, strong play from love than any credit from using the Junker Queen. Because I, like, I genuinely think you could just do all of this and more and better without using her. Just like give me something else. Give me something else. You're not, you're not able to use your brawl power effectively here. And I like I would almost rather them just like run a roadhog or something. It's just I don't think teams are equipped to effectively deal with her strengths because her strengths specifically just aren't that useful in most modes. She's like a kind of pub stomper hero who just like <laughs> she just exists to, to like be like flexible DPS dude in ladder. I don't think she has that much of a place in pro play besides in cough and push. Also, fun fact on um Henning's son and Aya also play into this matchup on Junker Town, where it's um, Aya on the non-Junker Queen and Henning's son on the Junker Queen, and uh, they they got air racing when defending Aya. Aya was on defense. They pushed every single fight into overtime on all three stages. And while that might be like maybe more discredit to Henning's son, maybe they're just not very good with this composition. Uh, I don't know. But fact of the matter is that they were put on edge by that poke damage and like floored it to the last moment every single time. And my guess is, oh yeah, just didn't manage to close it out because of like over aggression or something. And note here. The reason that Aya was finally able to hold here is they had an angle here and an angle here. And as soon as we got out of that single lane kind of zone, the Junker Queen just collapses. Like, she, as soon as we get into, like, these longer sight lines and out of the winding part. But yeah, so over time, over time, over time, over time. And they win that in the, the long run. And they full hold um, Junker Town in the overtime when it's 3-3. Three, three. So it, like... It just does not look good. And then, last map, I know it's been a long look, but I want to take a look at Uppers Academy versus playing for access because, first of all, it's uh, probably some of the better teams here, and uh, like in contenders, period. And second of all, it's on Rio, which is a new map, and one that I actually released an analysis video for recently, um, more just for fun than anyone viewing it because people don't watch my stuff but 
it, it lined up pretty closely with my expectations. So first of all, you see the teams running the Genji and the Echo. Both those picks are very strong on this map. Uh, Uprising Academy is playing a more poke-ish style than I expected. I expected like a poke or dive hybrid kind of vibe, but it, it's not too far off. But playing for Axis is playing the, the Chakra Queen. And first of all, what is this? What is this? Where is their answer to this? Where is their answer to this? Where is their answer to this? They don't have an answer to the angles here. Playing for Axis is destined to lose this fight. You have to rotate around this side. Really. Like, you just have to. And, you, like, the problem is normally the uh, Uprising Academy shouldn't even be able to use this high ground because they should get poked out. And while Sigma is kind of hard to poke out, if they had an Echo or something, Arrow and Bono would be much faster forced out, like an Echo Zen, because you could rotate your Zen up to here, poke at them, uh, your Echo, if they were on the Sig, these guys would be forced out. So they would have to be like playing the low ground here or something. And like, look at this. you The, the one Genji to dive, solo dive the Ana and Zen, which he cannot do anymore. That's your one answer <laughs> to, to getting map control here. He's forced out instantly. It, it, like, it's obvious. And just, it's so free. It's so free. Not to mention, Sojourn also has a very strong matchup into Junker Queen because of that AoE damage. It's very similar to Dynamite. And now these two are just in here getting staggered out. Uh, I, like, you, I, you don't want to be in that room as the attackers. That's like a defender's room. Because if you're a defender, you can just hunker in there for ages. Uh, and have an off angle. From the attacker's perspective, though, it's a death trap. Yeah, so it gets cleared out. Was super sloppy, though, from uh, playing for access. And I don't know any of these players besides Dynasty. I know Dynasty is a quite good player, but beyond that, uh, I do know of Aiden and Simple. Both of them are very good. Arrow is very good. And I'm pretty sure Uprising Academy probably has some good stuff. So now, playing for Axis does move up to here. But the problem is, <laughs> who on your team is playing to use the map to your advantage? Who? Widow. Widow is the only one. Not These three here, maybe Genji, but he's like kind of iffy. But like these three heroes, <laughs> they don't... You're, you're like playing against the map. Like you're just like trying to like swim upstream or something. Like, you're not getting the value out of the Junker Queen, the Brig, the Lucy here, because this map is actively working against you. You only have horizontal mobility. You're not able to poke from the high grounds and use the the, the good sight lines. Meanwhile, the map is, like, <laughs> shaking the Uprising Academy's hand and giving them, like, a couple hundred dollar bills. I, I don't like that play from Yop, uh, Yopin, by the way. I think that was a feeding play. The trade kind of works because the respawn is like really far away for playing for access. But note that Snow they switch on to Tracer because they know they want to get back as fast as possible and try and beat Yopin to being back, and she can leverage the map decently well still. But like this, like why are we even fighting for this? Why? Why are we fighting for this? Who's gonna who's gonna use this staging ground on this cop right? Your best option is going to be to rotate around this way and not be on Junker Queen. Because on Junker Queen, so maybe on Junker Queen, what you do is you go for a quick rotation, you shout, uh, burn your abilities, and rotate into the, the underground here. Not underground, the, the room. And then rotate back behind the, the, the supports through their staircase or something. But, and you start to see this happening. Like, not like the, the bottom rotation. But, like, <laughs> it's so free it's unironically so free no one here has any range damage these guys only have horizontal mobility and tracer only unfortunately only has horizontal mobility too so she doesn't actually fix this comp's problems very much because uh, yeah she's okay on she's good on this map but i think like genji echo uh winston ball like those are the kinds of heroes or like ana zen those are the kinds of heroes you want on this map this is literally so free for Arrow. How are they going to close the distance? Running this down against 
uh, against a Sojourn, against a Zenyatta, against a Sigma with Flux, an Ana with Nano and Nade, and an Echo who's either returning from spawn or somewhere over there. It, it's just not possible. It wasn't possible from the start. And while Arrow makes it look so easy, it, I mean, like this isn't to discredit Arrow's skill, but it was easy. It was. It looked so easy because it was that easy. And the reason, by the way, that they also can get away with running the Sojourn here is because she has very fast horizontal mobility in addition to the vertical. So even if she is pressured here, she can pretty quickly get over down to there and duck down and then loop around to safety more. So I didn't predict that uh, teams would put their main tank here. I thought they would put their main tank more on the low ground. But if you if the enemy team is playing Junker Queen or whatever, this makes a lot of sense as a starting position, and there's no reason to really drop to the low ground. You can kind of just chill here, especially if they don't have that much poke damage. Though if it was uh if they were on like a lot of poke damage or whatever, I'd play like something down in that room. Because then you're on a really strong off angle from your supports and can kind of just pummel if they try and touch point or flank around. <laughs> Free pickoff on Dynasty is just kind of unlucky. So that's like the one cost of the, like, this is a strong counter angle that uh, that playing for Axis has. But they can't capitalize on this because their team is over here, not over here where they would need to be to actually have an off angle, right? This isn't an off angle. They're all stacked. So right now they're just praying their Widow hits a shot because they're not using the macro that they need to. And if you leave Snowla here, well, then it's pretty free for uh, Bono to just jump across and pummel uh for Yopin to dive snarl again which they already almost do and like you're just like you don't you have so little room to work with with this comp on this map and i've seen teams running junker queen on dorado too dorado one of like the biggest high ground maps in the game it, it just doesn't add up so here playing for access goes for their power spike with beats uh they probably have to force rally too well, guess what? We have AoE Flux, we have uh, E here, we have Nade, which lands on these two. And our whole power spike is, is gone, right? They kite us out. And and where where's what's our Junker Queen doing, huh? Like... All of that, we, we just spent the whole map playing for one good push one viable push and we're just able to do air because we haven't had enough impact throughout the entire neutral phase to actually make anything happen because we don't have enough mobility to put us to, into like any or poke damage to have us giving out any neutral pressure we just had zero neutral pressure uh it's just it's really ugly and then our last section that we'll see here is the the offense from uprising academy they're playing the Winston. You will see how much easier this is. It's actually monstrous. The Ash, I think, is better here. And Junker Queen is a little better on the defense because she's already situated and like doesn't need to do stuff. But like she's still poked out so much easier, I think. Like you're she's already on half HP and had Shout Forced. That's not good. That's so much early resource force. Poke. Aiden gets a pick from over somewhere. And like, these guys barely even need to use the off angle too because we just have stronger poke damage, man. Like, it's actually just unreal. Like, I, I'm playing for Axis. I feel like they just threw this map with this compositional pick. And even more so with the way that they played it. But... Like, you can see, Junker Queen just has so little ability to make the map work for her. She doesn't even have Ryan's ability to deny areas as confidently against, like, poke and stuff or uh, brawling power. Because she's, like, very, um, uh, she's more cyclic in her impact. But then, if you're going to be cyclic in your impact and, like, very, like, high tempo, low tempo cycles, why not just play Roadhog? 
right? Like, unless you need the mobility, which in that case you would use her for push or for for cough, because those are the ones where you need a lot of horizontal mobility. And she's just constantly poked out. Uh, she's constantly countered by this AOE damage, or at least checked and like reducing the strength of that comp. And that comp doesn't have other strengths to play into. It's a one-trick pony. In conclusion, not that anyone's probably watching for this long, but if you did, great job, and I appreciate your support. But in conclusion, teams got to stop running this so much in contenders. This is not the sauce. It doesn't take a tactical genius to realize that we should not be playing Junker Queen Lucio Brig or Junker Queen Moira Brig or Junker Queen Moira Lucio on Rio and on Dorado and, and even maps like King's Row and Junker Town that are like more horizontal and brawly or whatever potential. Please, just, just know. I'm not a contenders coach. I'm not even uh, an open division coach. I read that this was not going to work before Junker Queen got released, before the beta came out, like a little bit before when we had just heard about her abilities and saw the previews. This is not a difficult uh, team decision to make, in my eyes. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is the comp that you do feel like fits your team the best, and if so, so be it. But as it stands, I do not believe that this is the best theoretical meta comp which I do believe is probably something like Ball, Tracer, uh, Ana, Zen, Sojourn at the moment. And I don't believe it's the best comp for these players necessarily either, beyond just being ooga booga easy to run, run it down mid. And with that, I uh, conclude my Contenders VOD session, and I rest my case. Thank you for listening.